Old model steamboats in poor condition. Part 7. Replacing engine components with commercial fittings and making thread adapters to accommodate standard ME model engineering fittings for the regulator and lubricator. This is the steam engine, and on the end of the steam engine's crankshaft, there is a brass fitting. I'm going to replace this with a commercial universal joint. In this clip, I'm using a micrometer to check the size of the crankshaft. And just as I suspected, it is quarter of an inch in diameter. Over now to the lathe and lightly clamped in the chuck is the brass fitting which is part of the universal joint. The hole in the middle isn't the correct size, so I'm using a drill which is one imperial size less than quarter of an inch to drill a hole through it. And then to get the finished accurate size, I'm using a reamer. After slowly reaming the hole in the brass fitting, it's a perfect fit on the crankshaft. And in this clip, I'm estimating how much end float I need to allow. And it's only a tiny amount that's required. So I tighten the grub screw, and that's it for this part of the job. This is the main universal joint fitting. These are really good quality commercial items, and it just push fits onto the splines. A close-up of it shows you what it is. And they're very strong and work very well for a long period of time. At this point, I thought I would run the steam engine on compressed air for a few minutes. This is an edited highlight. The engine is quite powerful, but at the moment it's running on so little air, I can stop it by nipping the crankshaft. So I thought, well, I'll stop it by nipping the crankshaft and fit the universal joint on the end. So what's the point of a universal joint like this? Well, really, just one of them gives you limited articulation. By using two of these universal joints, with a central drive shaft connecting both of them together, you would get really good articulation, but this will be adequate provided I take the time and effort to make sure that the engine is accurately aligned with the propeller shaft. The main steam inlet union on this engine uses a plumbing type fitting, which looks very clumsy. I need to make a fitting to allow me to fix the regulator and the displacement lubricator in this position. Yes, I am aware that the displacement lubricator is already fitted to the engine, but in its current position it's a bit too low down in the boat for ease of filling and emptying. So what's the plan? Do I fit a union like this and machine it? No, it looks really bad, really clumsy. So what I'm going to do is modify the whole thing. And the first thing I need to do this is a hacksaw. I'm carefully supporting the pipe and very gently hacksawing the end of it off. A quick health and safety warning when using a hacksaw so close to your thumb, you definitely need to keep your eye on what you're doing because you do not want to inadvertently hacksaw off your thumb. Also, it's a good idea to take great care when the hacksaw gets very close to the end of the cut. Put less pressure on near the end of the cut, because if the hacksaw slips, you're likely to damage the engine. Notice that I have a cloth on the engine to stop the copper particles from falling into the engine. The next thing I need to do after cleaning up the end of the pipe is use one of these. This is a tailstock die holder with a quarter by 40 threads per inch die fitted. And now it's time for a top tip. It's quite straightforward to thread copper pipe, but you must have a support fitted internally. And the diameter of the internal part of a copper pipe that is quarter of an inch in diameter is 5 30 seconds of an inch. But you don't need to look around the workshop for a piece of 5 30 seconds of an inch bar. All you need to do is use the drill shank of a 5 30 seconds drill bit. You also need to use plenty of lubrication, pack off the die to clear the chips frequently and clean out the die, and most importantly, keep the die holder perfectly in line with the copper pipe. And if you do all of those things, you should get quite a clean thread like this one. All I need now is an adapter, so I'm using a commercial T-piece and I'm going to butcher it. I could make one from scratch, but this is just quicker and anything that saves time is a good thing. I'm going to do this job in the drilling machine, and I'm leaving the union nuts in place anyway, so it's really easy to hold the part in the machine vise. What I'm doing at the moment is drilling through the fitting using a 7 30 seconds of an inch drill which is tapping size for a quarter by 40 threads per inch. Quite a lot of beginners get very confused with thread sizes. Generally speaking, I work with ME threads, ME standing for model engineering. I would generally use ME threads for most small steam engines and fittings. This is quarter by 40 threads per inch. I would also be using occasionally quarter by 32 threads per inch and then I use 5 16 by 32 and 3 8 by 32, etc, etc. One end of this T-piece is now threaded quarter by 40 threads per inch. I nearly made a big mistake with this, because normally, Stuart Model's displacement lubricators are threaded quarter by 32 threads per inch. 
but this one uses another type of ME thread, and this one is 3 16 by 40 threads per inch, so it's really best never to presume anything and always check. For instance, some commercial fittings supplied by Stuart Models are 26 threads per inch. After threading the hole for the displacement lubricator, I tried the T-piece on the pipe, and it's a very good smooth fit. And now it's time to find out whether or not the displacement lubricator lines up in the correct position on the T-piece without using a shim washer. I've put some Loctite 542 on the thread because I know it's going to fit as I did a dry run first. As I mentioned before, the reason for fitting the displacement lubricator in this position just makes it very much easier to handle. This is a slide valve regulator and it has to be fitted in this position. I was going to make a 5 16 by 32 to quarter by 40 adapter at this point, but then I thought, well, no, this is a much better idea. So I removed the T-piece, then I threaded the other end in exactly the same way as I've just shown previously. And now comes the final assembly. I've just had a deja vu. Have I just done this? What day is it? Is it time for my tablets? No, I know what I'm doing. I am fully in control. And so am I. Me too. And before the voices start arguing, I'm using a cloth to wipe off every trace of the Loctite 542. As you can clearly see here, the Loctite 542 has removed the paint. And just as before, with some more Loctite 542, I fit the displacement lubricator. Before fitting the slide valve regulator in place, I thought it would be a good idea to just mention something. It's most important that the regulator is connected the right way around as it is the pressure of the steam that firmly pushes the slide valve onto the port face. If you connect it the other way around, it will not work. So if you're piping up steam regulators that are of the slide valve type, you do it like this. So now with the regulator fitted to the engine and the displacement lubricator, I'm going to test it on compressed air. The displacement lubricator will not work with compressed air, it only works with steam. So for compressed air running, I inject some oil into the airline. I think I'd better fit this though, this is a blanking plug, and this is fitted as usual using a small amount of Loctite 542. So with everything in place, it's time to test it and see if it works. And it certainly does. This boat is of course going to be radio controlled, and the regulator will be connected to a servo using a long rod and a clevis. But for now, I will function as the servo. I'll leave the engine running on compressed air for the last part of the video. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says video playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.